Hey guys, even here and in this video we have something really interesting. This is the first time since Nick Walker stopped working with Dom Super Sliced. Since they stopped working together, this is the first time that Dom Super Sliced commented on something regarding the situation. And it is very interesting what he wrote, I'm gonna read it to you in a second. Before we get to that comment, let's take a look at Nick's physique in this most recent physique update of his. When I saw this, I was like, wow. I was like, this looks seriously good. Like, his waistline improved significantly, wouldn't you say so? I think he can pull his stomach in way more than he was able to do it before. And I think he changed the posing a little bit. I mean, I don't think so, I can see that. So first of all, the legs. Before, before he used to do it like this, Dorian Yates style, when you put your hint back one step backwards and you kind of lean onto it. And this is like the mandatory way you have to do this pose like this in IFBB where I compete. If you don't do it this way, the judge, the stage judge will come to you and he will correct you right there on the stage. Yeah, that's what they do in IVB. It's way more strict. There are so many rules. It's not like IVB Pro League or MPC where you have a lot more freedom with the variations of poses. In IVB, it's not like that. You can't, for example, you can't wear uh, too short trunks to show your glutes more. There are so many rules like that. So this is one of the rules. Anyways, back to Nick Walker. So you're looking at his possibly the best edition from last year, which is Iron Classic 2021. And this was a great pose for Nick Walker. He looked amazing inside tricep. However, when you do a pose like this with the legs this way, you can't really show your hamstrings in the best light possible. You can't really press your thighs against one another. It's more of a like you squat a little bit and you show your, your quad separation. But it's not really the pose that will make your legs look huge. And when you do it like this and you and you lean backwards a little, it's really hard to control your stomach properly. Now, with this new variation, first of all, he can show his amazing hamstrings. And he has one of the craziest hamstrings, I wouldn't say in the world right now, I would say in the history of bodybuilding, honestly. Like, he is known for having ridiculous hamstrings. And it's not just hamstrings, when you press your legs together you make your quads look even bigger, maybe not as separated and you won't have as much of a height to that quad when you, when you, when you press it uh, versus when you flex it when you step on that foot, but I think this is definitely a better variation and it's not really the perfect angle, so you can't really see how his legs are gonna look on stage once he perfects this pose and when he hits the right angle. But as you can see, he's twisting his upper body quite a bit. I'm pretty sure he worked on his mobility, his core mobility, his hip mobility, because he can definitely open up a lot. Like, he's showing his side leg while really twisting a lot and showing uh, almost both of his pecs and he's showing the, the shoulder width and also he's showing his great arms. So this is definitely a great pose. And one of the most important things here to notice is his waistline. So let's take a look at what this guy in the comment section had to say about Nick, what he looks like right now and about Dom Super Sliced and then we're gonna see what Dom had to say as well. So as you can see right here, this guy tags somebody and says that they did a tremendous job with his posing. So Nick has a posing coach. I think I saw that posing coach on, on Nick's YouTube video. And then the guy tags Dom Super Sliced and says, uh, Tom Super Sliced isn't being given nearly enough credit as he should for all the time and knowledge. He helped Nick improve his physique this year. Waistline is tight now. That was the comment, and then Tom Super Sliced even got into this conversation. This is, I think, the first time I tried to get a comment from him. I asked him in multiple times in the comments. He never replied. He never, he always ignored. This is the first time I'm seeing something. So here uh, he says, Yeah, I'm sure bringing his waist down, controlling inflammatory markers, and a bunch of other things he was never accustomed to. Bring his quads up, all came within the last 6 to 8 weeks and had nothing to do with the 9 months prior, lol. But that's okay, and we unfortunately all know how this sport goes. Well, I gotta say, I completely agree with Dom Super Sliced. Now, first of all, when I was watching Nick's progress in his offseason, I definitely noticed that he got much, much bigger. Like, he definitely grew a ton. 
Now, he says that he's like 278, 279 right now, and he's probably gonna step on stage at 265. Last year, do you know how heavy he was at the Mr. Olympia? He was 245. So he's going to be potentially about 20 pounds heavier. <laughs> Guys, 20 pounds in one year. Well, what did you expect? I mean, he was growing from show to show, and he was competing multiple times a year. Now he had an entire off-season to improve, and this is the kind of progress that is pretty much expected, yeah, from a freak, from a mutant, from a guy like this, 20 pounds in a year, sure. I mean, almost, like, literally nobody can do this, <laughs> except for him in the world right now, probably. There are probably a handful of guys that can make this kind of progress, but yeah, yeah, he did that. Now, I was watching Nick's uh, off-season, and I thought he didn't look that hard. He usually looks much, much harder, but that's probably because he just gained some body fat, which is okay. I mean, since he uh, did that, he, he gained a lot of muscle, which is probably the right approach. And also, Dom talks about uh, controlling the inflammatory markers, and he says that Nick was not accustomed to doing that kind of stuff, which is basically saying Matt Jensen doesn't care about controlling uh, these uh, inflammatory markers not necessarily that he doesn't care, maybe he thinks that Matt doesn't know about all this stuff, so Dom super sliced the knowledge, and all the work that he put in when he was working with Nick actually paid off, with Nick now having a smaller waistline and making all this progress in the offseason. As Dom says, he didn't, uh, he didn't make these improvements in the last six weeks, or whatever he's working, however long he's working with Matt Jensen. Of course, he made those improvements in the off-season. I mean, Matt Jansen is just gonna fine-tune him into the show so he gets conditioned and he peaks properly, but as far as the improvements that were made, whole credit has to go to Dom Super Slice. I mean, of course, to Nick, first of all, but if somebody helped him, then that's definitely Dom Super Slice. It's not Matt Jansen. I mean, Matt Jensen is basically a genius when it comes to peaking guys for the stage, and I, and I saw so many guys make great progress in the offseason, most of them actually, with Matt Jensen, they make great progress, really, but I don't know, maybe he would, maybe Nick would make the same progress if he worked with Matt Jensen, maybe even more, maybe he would be like 30 pounds heavier and his waist would be smaller, <laughs> which I doubt would actually be the case, uh, so I think Nick got maximum out of his uh, off-season with the help of Dom Super Sliced, and what we are seeing right now is Matt Jensen taking all the credit for himself, and, and Dom is basically somebody that nobody talks about, nobody cares what he did in the off-season with Nick, and I think the main reason for that is Nick Walker himself, it seems like Nick is not really showing any gratitude to, to Dom Super Sliced, he never mentions him, he never says anything positive about uh, his uh, off-season with him, and quite the opposite, actually, he's being like, now I got my groove back, now I have my confidence back, uh, you can see it right here in his last uh, post, where also his waistline looks great, uh, he says, I got my confidence back, again, he's talking about getting better, looking better, doing better, now, now, only now, that he started working with Matt Jensen, and surely people will get the impression that Matt Jensen uh, does a better job as a coach than Dom Super Sliced, which I don't know if it's necessarily the truth, because, you know, Nick made great progress in terms of waist size and overall muscle mass in the, in the past offseason, so I don't know, and also people will just forget about Dom Super Sliced at some point, and they will only remember uh, Matt Jensen being Nick's coach, but... I think Dom should get some credit for making these crazy improvements on Nick Walker. As you can see, he looks amazing right now. Before we move on, guys, I just want to show you the Old School Labs uh, protein powder. As you can see, Vintage Brawn right here. As you can see in the background, I'm crazy about the supplements. Unfortunately, Old School Labs doesn't have all the vitamins and all the little amino acids or whatever but they have some great products that I love to use, for example, this protein powder, and notice I'm not saying whey protein powder, because it's not just simple whey protein, it's also beef isolate and egg white protein, so I like to use this one as a replacement for my meals, when I can't eat for some reason, it's basically a complete meal, and I love the flavor, like this is chocolate right here, but there is so many great flavors, I also love banana milkshake, that one is really refreshing, so if you guys want to try it out, there is a link down below, and if you use my code EVAN, you get a 15% discount and this is a great way to show your support guys so if you enjoy my videos you enjoy my content you want me to continue making these videos 
You can support me by trying one of the old school labs products. Vintage Brawn is something I really recommend highly. All right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is Matt Jensen. Uh, he made this statement. It was posted on Bison Tries uh, Instagram page. Uh, basically, Matt said that the reference point you guys are using to place Charles, meaning Charles Griffin, uh, this year is off big time. He has never looked like this and he's up 15 pounds. And then also you can see the comment from James Hollingshead saying uh, Charles could literally land uh, uh, top spots. And then you can see my comment as well. <laughs> I said, uh, uh, who, who, who in the top 10 can he beat with his structure? So basically what I'm trying to say is it doesn't really matter how big he is because yeah, he is a big, big bodybuilder, but I don't know, using saying that he can be like, I don't know, top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, I don't see that. And I'm showing you this photo that he posted in which he looks so, so freaky. It's insane. Like his lat insertions are so low and he has so much mass in those lats, in that back, everywhere, pretty much everywhere. This guy is so packed with muscle. It's ridiculous. That photo is from his previous contest prep, but check out this, like this is recent. When you look at these videos, you're like, what the f This is like one of the most impressive bodybuilders in the world right now. One of the most uh, muscular, one of the, one of the thickest, one of the most conditioned, like he is freaky everywhere. It's ridiculous, especially when he's training, when he's in the gym, when he's doing uh, his poses, when he's bicep curling as well. He has great arms. He's just so massive. But on the stage, it's kind of a different story. This was him, I think, like two years ago, and this was not Charles Griffin that you're gonna see this year or that you saw the last time he was on stage because he improved significantly. As you can see right here, the abs are non-existent. There is, let's say, an ab, one ab, because there is nothing, nothing going on. It was just emptiness, uh, void, nothing. And uh, as far as the legs, there is there are some details at the very ends of his quads on the sides. In the middle, nothing. Nothing was happening. Like he was big, he had a lot of muscle even back then. But you know his posing wasn't that great, and he still had to work on details. Now he looks much better, actually. Sure, he made progress, yeah, but the biggest changes are in the posing because he learned how to do a vacuum and when he does the vacuum, his waistline gets smaller, which is a problematic area for him big time, like he has a really, really thick waist, really blocky, square physique and now when he does the vacuum, his waistline looks much, much smaller and he's hiding the lack of ab development and also I think he improved his abs and when he does this pose, vacuum pose, you can see some details in the abs as well. And I think he also changed his posing with his legs because now you can see a little bit more details uh, in the inner part. I think he's twisted his uh, his feet a little bit more. So he definitely changed, uh, he, he tweaked his posing a little, and he improved a little, so he definitely looked much better uh, this year when he won California Pro. But before California Pro, he did Indy, and he was supposed to do the New York, but he chickened out of New York because he was beaten by Blessing at Indy. Because he knew that Blessing was going to do the New York after Indy as well. And he just beat him uh, at Indy. Why would uh, Charles end up beating him again next show? doesn't make any sense. So, of course, he didn't do the New York. And I think there would be no chance of Charles at his best beating Blessing the way he looked at New York. Uh, because Blessing destroyed him, honestly. I think Blessing absolutely killed him. I don't think it was even close. I remember making a video about this and I thought Blessing wins this easily. Some people weren't so sure about it. I, I remember Nick Strength and Power saying that uh, that Charles is going to win and then Blessing was angry at, at Nick at Nick Strength and Power. But yeah, I, don't, I didn't see it that way. I think it was pretty clear that Blessing was going to blow Charles out of the water. And do you guys consider Blessing a top 10 Olympian? I don't. I definitely don't. Like, top 10 of the Mr. Olympia today is, is ridiculous. Like, in my top 10, like, at a 10 spot, you know, probably that's going to be Andrew Jack. And Andrew Jack is much better than Blessing of Audible. So, I mean, most likely we're going to see this year at the Mr. Olympia, but I think he is. So, top 10 of the Mr. Olympia for Charles Griffin. 
that's not gonna happen, no way, no way, I don't know what Matt Jensen is saying, I think he's just biased because he's his client, but let's be real, guys, whatever you think, tell me down below, but me personally, I think Charles Griffin has absolutely no chance, zero chance of cracking the top 10, even if he adds 50 pounds of muscle with his structure, I just don't think it's gonna happen. And for the end of this video, we have Brandon Curry with a new physique update. That's right, we haven't really seen much from Brandon Curry lately, and he posted this photo with his coach Abdullah, and he says, stay calm. Now, he didn't say that this is recent, I, I believe it is, it should be, like, he is four weeks out of Mr. Olympia, so he should be looking something like this, you know, he should be in condition, he should be, like, at around 90% of what's gonna be on stage, and I know Brandon has that kind of a approach, he basically is ready two weeks out, and then he just cruises into the show, he doesn't do anything drastic in the last, in the last like, two weeks of uh, of the prep, so at four weeks out, he's like at uh, minimum 80% or even like 90% of what's gonna, what we're gonna see on the stage, and from what I'm seeing right here, you know, he looks like regular old Brandon Curry, uh, he has the fullness, he has the conditioning, pretty good, you can see all the separation in his, uh, in his shoulders, uh, you can see some separation in his chest, it's not really like much of a physique update, you can only see his arms and his delts, but you can see like the fullness and the size and the conditioning, and you can pretty much see that Brandon Curry is not done, he should not be signed off. So many people don't have him in their, I don't know, top three, top four. Some people even have him out of uh, their top six. And uh, I, I think that's a mistake. I think that's a big mistake. I don't see why Brandon would be out of that top three. I mean, he already has beaten literally everybody that is going to be competing on the Mr. Olympia stage, so why not this year as well? I mean, I know Nick is making improvements, I know Hunter is making improvements, I know we have Andrew Jack and so many other new guys, but I don't know, I don't think they are, I don't believe they're going to make that much progress to completely uh, surpass Brandon Curry that much, and I think Brandon is going to bring something better than what he brought at the Arnold Classic. I think he saved himself a little, I don't think he wanted to go all in for that Iron Classic, I think he talked about that as well, so I believe this is going to be his absolute best at the, at the Mr. Olympia, probably his uh, best that we saw so far, I'm pretty sure he's going to make some improvements, so me personally, I do have him in my top three. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more bodybuilding stuff like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Also, don't forget to check out the link down below and uh, buy one of the Old School Labs products. Thank you so much guys for watching, all the best and bye bye.